fifth point I'd like to share with you is keep your heart free. Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Be willing to reconcile with others who are embittered against you. Some may be in a bitter place not wanting to reconcile. Maybe they cut you off because of bitterness. Realize that you need to be willing to be a peacemaker. Pray that the Lord will tenderize their heart and fill them with the love of God. Bitterness blinds people. He who has a bitter root defiles many because many times they spread evil reports with gossip. Walk in love and pray that God gives them the gift of repentance. Keep your heart clean walking in the love of God, for His love never fails. The sixth point I'd like to share with you is get understanding on sowing seed and harvest time. That's right, sowing seed and harvest time. Get revelation on it. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of you, as he purposes in his heart, give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Make an effort to understand the power of sowing and reaping. I'm sure that there are some who are turned off by different variations of this teaching. But just because someone does not represent it right does not mean it is not valid. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You may also be throwing out your intended blessing. God many times uses the thing that offends your natural mind to bless you and to test and see if you will receive it in that form. Jesus came to the religious leaders in a form that they did not expect. Because they would not receive Him the way He came, they blew their God-given opportunity to receive Him. People can get touchy on this subject because most have presented it in the context of finances. It is very valid in that context, but it is not limited to that. Realize that God has entrusted to us. Everything God has entrusted to us, we are the steward of. And in that way, all that we have is seed that can be sown into different places. Our time, our work, our money, our prayers, our worship is all seed that is sown. One plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. If we want to increase in our lives in both the spirit and in the natural, we need to get the revelation of seed time and harvest. Who doesn't want to have a harvest in their lives? I believe we all do. But we have to sow in order to reap. Get addicted to sowing seeds of all kinds. In this, God will bless you beyond all you can imagine. The seventh point I want to share with you is drink in his new wine. Hebrews 1, 8 through 9. But to the Son he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. I had an amazing experience where I fell face down intoxicated, drinking in the new wine of His presence and laughing as the Holy Spirit was saturating me. It brought such an amazing, wonderful weakness in His presence. The Lord is going to pour out some vintage wine this year. It is going to be good. Take time not only to seek the Lord, but to receive from the Lord in His presence. Allow God to fill you with His joy, for it is the joy that comes from His presence that strengthens us. God will give you a fresh anointing as you simply receive in His presence. Remember, Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy far above all of His companions. How much more do we need His oil upon our lives? Always remember that your joy is connected to the quantity that you are able to drink from the wells of salvation overflowing blessings to you and have a great day in his presence.